Welcome back to another Cannon Flash recap. We're looking at episode two, Mixed Signals. So let's get right into it. Some of my cons for this episode, the West siblings. Man, for as good as Joe West is, Iris and, and Wally just, oh my God. So for me, last episode, I said that, um, you had Iris West, which in the comics is pretty much a ripoff of Lois Lane. And I don't understand why they can't just get her in that role, in that mode. And this episode was such a huge reason for why we need that. Because now they explored this episode uh, with Barry having to come to terms with Iris being the leader of the game. And them trying to figure out a work dynamic. Dumbest premise ever. Iris, ha- she, nothing's changed since the first time. She has no tech background. She has no police background. She has no nothing. And so what qualifies her to be the leader? Especially with Caitlyn now coming back. I mean, I it, it makes no sense. And then she wants to get upset because Barry's... Being a Flash, he was a hero before you even knew about it. And now you think you're going to tell him what to do. So stupid. Wally is so useless. I saw an article recently saying, should Wally go to Legends of Tomorrow? And they were saying how he maybe could be a cameo because he might be too powerful. But I don't know. I don't know if he fits on Legends, but he needs to go somewhere. He needs to go help uh, Jesse and Earth 3 or... Earth 47, they need to drop him off somewhere because he is terrible. I, I don't understand this whole emo swoop and punk rock look he's got this year. I never liked the actor as Wally. I, nothing about Wally I like. And then him as a Flash, he sucks. Like, I mean, that's the way they're writing him, of course. But if you're going to make it where he gets knocked out with one hit and he's done for the whole final battle, then what's the point of even having him? He, they, they need to move him. Kid Flash is not working. And Iris, they need to figure out what they're doing with her because the first few seasons, a lot of people are like, Iris has nothing to do, blah, blah, blah. I didn't agree with that. I'm like, Iris is the, it's kind of like the eye candy. She's the carriage. She's what Barry's chasing. It was cool when she was unavailable. It was cool when he liked other people now that she wanted him. Now that they're together, and it was kind of cool when they got together, but now that they're together and she's working or running Star Labs, makes no sense. Make her a reporter, let her report, let her be gung-ho investigating things and having to get saved just like Lois Lane. And it's not so much to say that she can't do anything, but again, that's the character you made. She is the anchor for Barry to the real world, and that's what she needs to be. That's what she becomes anyway. Like tonight, and he's having a fight, and she's just yelling at Cisco. Cisco, do something! Oh, like Cisco wasn't trying to help. That's all she did. She got no real answers besides hit yourself with a lightning bolt, which everybody immediately was like, "That's a stupid idea." So I just can't stand Iris. I can't stand Iris in the front. Iris on the side was fine, but in this show, she does not need to be in the front. And I feel offended, kind of, and I don't really usually go into this, but when everybody's talking about female characters, blah, 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 how does regulating her to, oh my God, the whole city is going to be destroyed, and I don't care because you left me. How could you leave me? Screw the city. You shouldn't have left me. We should go to therapy. No, it'll be fine, but I lied. I'm actually upset. Why would you leave me? Why don't you listen to me? Why did you plan the wedding without asking me? It was so annoying. And then to regulate her contribution to run, Barry, run. I'm done. I'm done with Iris. Okay, anyway. Positives. There's so many other positives. I don't care. The Flash has went back to season one fun. Cisco is on 10. He is full powered, funny, charming Cisco. The whole thing with him and Gypsy was great. Gypsy is fine. And so I love that. Just all the jokes. Starting off with the um, Risky Business, Tom Cruise thing with Barry. It's just fun. 
another positive, they made a concerted effort this year to show how fast Barry is. Something we saw in season one, something that has been inconsistent throughout the series, but a lot of fans complain about. Now, it's nice to see him able to run across town, get coffee before pancake flips, him able to catch all the shrapnel from a bomb. We just have to now see if they carry it through. It's not that Flash never showed it. It's they never stay consistent. At some points, he can run across the world in a few seconds, and then at some points, he gets stabbed by somebody standing right in front of him. So we have to see if it stays consistent. The villain tonight, I liked his backstory. I liked everything, actually. The only problem I had is they didn't explain his powers, but then right at the end of the show, they sh- they gave you a reason why, which made it perfect. So I like the way they brought him in. And I like this idea of villains that are not so much about speed and power, but it's about finding more creative ways to stop them. So we get a reveal that the thinker is uh, setting up, I guess he had 12 creations. And the reason he brought the flashback is to help capture all of them. So that's interesting. It's super interesting. And I'm, I'm not so much sold on the thinker yet. He is such a fake brainiac, but I like what they're setting up with 12 quantifiable villains with powers that we can now chase down. I like that much more than kind of this big bad like Zoom or Savitar. So far, I'm liking it. I mean, so I had a lot of positives. I really liked this episode. As far as the rating, I'm going to give it three and a half out of five lightning bolts. Uh, it was above average. I think some things were so annoying that I couldn't get over it. But for the most part, I had a lot of fun. I laughed. Like, it was like the, the, uh, first, uh, therapy scene was so funny. Oh, my mom died. Oh, yeah, my dad died too. Oh, yeah, I used to be engaged to someone. Oh, yeah, he died too. And it was just so funny. So they laughing at themselves. They're having a good time. It's so opposite of season three. I'm excited right now. Um, predictions. I mean, it's kind of laid out for us. There's no real mystery right now. It's like, hey, we got 12 villains that the thinker we want, we, we believe the thinker wants those people caught. So he can round them up because he probably gave them powers and they got loose or who knows what. But there is a mystery of what the thinker's doing. But I don't think it's much more than that. It's like these people need to get caught and we're going to have some fun along the way. So I don't know if there's too many predictions. I do feel as though Wally's going to leave. Maybe not next episode, but I think they're setting up Wally for an exit because he is just not working with this team. And then, of course, we're going to have uh, pretty soon a Killer Frost episode where she can't control herself. So that's about it. But anyway, go to the comment section. Let me know what you thought about episode two, Mixed Signals. Thumbs up, subscribe. Check me back next Tuesday. And if you heard it here, it's official canon.